did we miss out? We've always missed the best moments. You only had one job. Can you play the fucking music? Don't you hear the music? Barely, not anymore. Wait, let me try, let me try. I want to try an intro. Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome back to our channel. And this week, we're going to be talking about Kuze. What are we going to talk about? Kuze, can you fucking talk say about how about? can you ruin a fucking intro? <laughs> was I'm great. kidding. No, it that was, was good. It was good. It was good. All right, we're back in the building with, a, with our second episode. We definitely didn't think it was going to happen, but yeah, here we go. It's a mad thing, in it. Sorry. What? <laughs> He's, it is. It is mad. It is mad. And today, I'm not gonna spoil all the fun. We're gonna be talking about Jacob. What are we talking about? Wrestling. Precisely. And what is that, Kuzi? Why are we talking about wrestling? <laughs> what is wrestling? <laughs> what is wrestling? Uh, wrestling is a sport. I think it, it is. It's like a martial art. Um, it's very popular around the world. Jakob, is it popular in Sweden? Wrestling. I had no idea. Jacob's our resident Swede. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. We don't need to know anything or like everything. Why? Because we have a special guest and he's going to enlighten us about wrestling. Uh, our guest, uh, he knows probably so much about wrestling. He represents Sweden internationally. Uh, he Ooh. accomplished so much at a very young age. We're going to talk about all of those ac accomplishments. But... Uh, what are like the most popular sports in Sweden? So the first one is probably football, right? Yeah. All right. The second one comes ice hockey. Yeah. Jakob, our Swedish expert. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I am the say? Swedish expert. Yes. Uh, if he was any other ethnicity, this would be so bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're like, this is our Asian expert, American no. expert. Oh my god. Ice hockey is pretty popular. It's like since it's cold most of the yeah. year, and. Ice hockey is cool. We are Viking sport. No. Well done, Jacob. Now we talked a bit about wrestling. Soon, our guy will be here. We are excited. See you later, alligator. <laughs> We're back in the building with our guest. Uh, he is ready. He's going to join us soon. Um, I think we forgot to say his name in, in our intro. His name is Kevin Makota uh, Ström. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Yes, the champ is here. Can you turn turn on your camera, Kevin, and join us? Hi, guys. <laughs> All right. Yes, welcome to the podcast. Welcome. Uh, thank you, guys. The one and only Kevin. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. And uh, I hope Thanks. you are good. Well, I'm fine. I mean, it's kind of boring with quarantine and everything, mm. but I'm doing fine. How are you guys doing? I'm great. great. Jacob, what about you? I'm great, mate. Before we start, I just want to uh, say this. I think in this society, there is the stereotype that like martial artists or like fighters, they have to be like aggressive or like rude or like fucking ready to fight all the time. But I think you're like one of the, the nicest or like the, the most genuine guys I know in the school. So yeah, you definitely break that stereotype. Uh, and uh, let's get into it. You do freestyle wrestling, right? Mm, that's so correct. And what's like, what's special with freestyle wrestling? First, wrestling is a sport where you're not allowed to punch or you, like use kicks. You can only like take down your opponent and like use certain techniques. But especially freestyle wrestling, that's when you are allowed to use all your body. Like you can grab the leg, you can trick with your leg, you can also do on the upper body. But sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so on. So it's pretty complex and open. You can do almost anything you want. Uh, except like punching or something like that. I think here's a picture of you uh, performing like a maneuver or doing something. So you're the one in, in yellow, so you're representing Sweden. Is, th is there a special name for what you're doing here? Actually, there's not a special name. That in that worst position, as I don't think you can see, but um, I have his leg and a few seconds after that, I threw him backwards. So he landed on his back. That was what happened in that situation. <laughs> I think uh, we have a video of what you were talking about. Look at that. Yeah, that, that's not 
like the same match, but okay. that's oh, a throw. But it's the same competition. It's pretty devastating, bro, like getting thrown on your back like that. Like, that makes me wonder, is there any sort of serious injury you could get wrestling? Of course you can get serious injuries. It mm. doesn't happen so often, though, because, I mean, since there are no punches and that, but if you don't land properly or land on your neck or something, then you can yeah. get a serious injury. Oh, wow. Have you ever been injured wrestling or no? Uh, well, actually, I never had, like, an injury, but I got knocked out once. <laughs> How? What the fuck? Oh, yeah. So I was in Estonia and I think I was wrestling a guy from Belarus when I was trying to go down and grab his leg. We call it a single leg attack in wrestling. And uh, then at the same time as I was trying to grab his leg, uh, he stepped forward with his knee. So it got on like on the side of my head. So, well, I just went to sleep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I, that, that's Nice I don't remember anything at all, but mm -hmm. I remember my dad, who's my coach, he was there, mm -hmm. and he said I was, like, laying on the mat and, like, shaking, like, and my eyes were, like, completely white, so it was a scary moment in my career. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's really intense. By the way, uh, first, have a look at this picture. So here's you with your dad, your trainer. Yep. Speaking of your, like, dad being your trainer... Uh, like how is that dynamic like does he ever bring something from home to the like the gym like does it ever make you like do more push-ups because you didn't do something at home <laughs> <laughs> or nothing like that he doesn't punish me and yeah things like that but I one like advantage of having your dad as your coach is that since you live under the same roof as him whenever I have a question I can just go like into the next room and ask him like he's always there so, um, is it ever pressure though, like having your dad be your trainer? Does it ever feel like no? No, I I have a few friends who think like they can't really train with their parents. They say like, oh my gosh, no, I couldn't have my dad as my coach or something. Mm -hmm. But for me, I I see it as a positive thing. Investing the the most sensitive part is the ears, right? And then you, yeah. you have these guards during the during the training. But why don't you put them on during the real match? Is it like not allowed or? Uh, fair and square, these guards, they are not so comfortable, like, when you tighten them, then, like, like you, strangling you, you like, yeah. you can't really yeah. breathe, so I don't like them, and, but the consequence of not having them can be seen <laughs> by looking at me, like, my ears are, like, all deformed. Is it called cauliflower ear, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, it's called cauliflower ear. Yeah, that's true. Every sports player, they have some, some marks from the sports that they do. Like no, that's players, true. They have like br probably like a broken nose or like football players, they have uh, yeah. like bruises on their legs. And I, it just shows that like you're a part of that world. And uh, Yeah. And, and to I, be honest, mm -hmm. lately, there's like, it's, it's like popular to have one. Like people see that you're doing a tough sport. Like exactly. you get what I mean, right? Usually when I'm on town, a, a completely stranger can come to me and ask like, hey, are you doing some kind, kind of martial arts? And I'm like, yeah, That's I'm wrestling. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. And yeah. kind of what Kuzey did when I get to know him. Yeah, I know. I, in my opinion, people nowadays are much more respectful to wrestlers mm. uh, than they were for like 10 years ago because they see that many for example, UFC champions like Henry Ciudo or Daniel Cormier were, uh, were wrestlers before they did MMA. So UFC has and uh, MMA has kind of boosted wrestling as well. Exactly. And uh, talking about MMA and wrestling, I think uh, the, the most famous probably wrestler in MMA right now is Khabib Nurmagomedov. Okay, I, I should have... Yeah, <laughs> Khabib Nurmagomedov from Dagestan, Russia. <laughs> exactly he's he's the guy in mma right now and here's a picture of him like literally um resting a bear bear yeah so this is the picture i was talking about uh khabib resting a bear is there any like uh unique thing that you do when you train that like other wrestlers don't do or this is probably you don't do this this is just <laughs> extreme <laughs> wait are you serious to ask me if i'm wrestling bears on no, no. <laughs> that's no. exactly what he's trying to ask no. only only wrestlers, only humans. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about sparring too. Um, it, it, sparring is like, actually is a good way to start a friendship as well, right? Because like there's so much respect between sparring partners. Yeah, when we have sparring sessions, it, sometimes they can become like really intensive, like, 
like a real tough match or something but in the end everyone shakes hand afterwards and mm -hmm. before and afterwards because i mean respect is like the the basic principle of sports it, it's very important exactly so talking about like training here's a video of you this is the training i was talking about so yeah which part of your body are you training here this is flexibility mm -hmm. like I need to be quick moving. Like, it may not look so, but this rope is like, it's pretty heavy, oh, even yeah, though it doesn't okay. look like that. So it's strength at the same time. So it's, it's pretty much a lot of things. So it's explosivity, it's flexibility and uh, strength on working at the same time. Yeah. Sounds kind of like the IB learner profile. <laughs> IB learner. And looking at this picture, I noticed that the, the date is July, the, like the 11th. At this time, yeah. I'm, I'm just like doing my vacation, just, you know, just like chilling. But, but you have to train, right? This is one of the like sacrifices that you have to do with wrestling. So you cannot just like go take a vacation and leave the sport for like three months. Yeah, that's one of the like backsides of being, of doing wrestling on such a high level. Mm -hmm. It's like, for example, in the, the champ, international championships, like European championship and world championship, they're always in the summer. So I can never like really go on a vacation abroad mm -hmm. or something in the summer. I have to stay home and train. When you do go, you probably get some attention. Dude, <laughs> you're, you're fucking ripped. Come we can on. end the video here. <laughs> <laughs> Is this mad genetics or hardcore training or both? Like, how do you get to- To be home? honest, to be honest, it's uh, hardcore training. I okay. mean, I've been working my whole life been wrestling for 30 years and wrestling like you need to be physically strong but as well uh, flexible explosive and everything and that's why wrestlers usually become very ripped and i guess that's why i look it as well i have a bit of a separate question um how yeah, sure. come your dad is your coach is it because he used to do wrestling as well is it like a family thing because we're from a small club and there's not so much coaches there. So back when I was five years old, my dad stepped in and said, hey, I, I can be the coach of, of like the whole club and mm -hmm. uh, especially me. And well, so we became. Um, That's actually so inspiring. That's really nice that he'd step yeah. in like that. And now it's obviously so successful. Since I spent so much time with him because he's my coach as well. I mean, we get a stronger relationship as well. Win-win win situation. Win-win yeah. situation, yeah. Those yeah. are the best, like, both having your, uh, like, a relationship as well as, like, having the, a great coach. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I can imagine, because like, a lot of times when people get into sports so young and they do start, like, professional and go into competitions, they are away from home a lot, and then they probably aren't with their family as much, and they don't know how to prioritize it, but you, you have your dad and you do competitions, so that's pretty great. So uh, when I was looking at your like Facebook account, I see like some of your accomplishments. So I'm just going to list them and then tell me if they're correct. You were uh, the cadet and junior champion in Sweden, right? That's correct. And then you're also the cadet champion in Nordic countries. So like all Scandinavian. Yeah, and, okay. the Scandinavian championship. And also you, yeah. you placed fifth in the world, like all the cadets world championship. You, you became yeah, that's fifth place. correct. That's okay. my biggest accomplishment so far. That's a result of hard working. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely shows. I had a friend and he, he was like going to be a pro basketball player and he like worked okay. so hard for it and he had like so, so many accomplishments. But then I think he, he got an injury and then he had to like leave the sport and then he had to like uh, get prepared for university. I hope it mm -hmm. like doesn't happen to you. But my question is uh, like, do you have a plan B basically? Like if, some, if this wrestling thing doesn't work out, which probably will, but... To be honest, uh, school's more important for me Although I spend a lot of time wrestling on wrestling and so on, uh, school is always my number one prioritization because mm -hmm. uh, there's not so much or there's literally no money wrestling in Sweden, which is mm -hmm. kind of sad because in countries yeah like Turkey where you are from, uh, many wrestlers become like big idols to the population. That's right. Yeah. So my I have. I have plans on continuing wrestling, but I need to keep studying as well because I can't, 
I can't cancel my studies. But to stay positive and like, mm. so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, what's your like best memory of wrestling or like mm. going abroad or something like the thing that you re- always remember? Uh, that will be my fifth place at world championship. Just to clear it up, in wrestling, uh, if you can't take fourth place, you can only take fifth. So for example, I was in the bronze medal match in the world championship, but since there, for some reason, nothing called fourth place, you be, you become fifth. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so yeah, that's my fifth place in the world championship because that's like, that was the highlight of my career. Like that's when, that's literally the only time I felt like satisfied, like, the hard work has finally been paid off, although I'm aiming even higher now. Professional speed. Love that. That's awesome. Talked about like there is not so much money for wrestlers in Sweden. Uh, yeah. What can the government do to make it better for the like wrestler slash students? Like if if there was more funding, would it be easier for you to do, do both like school and wrestling? Or, uh, of course, mm-hmm. of course. For example, I have a few friends from uh, from uh, Hungary. Uh, they go to a to a sports school where they only like they focus mostly on wrestling. Like, and uh, they may before they went to the school they were like only like ranked like eighth in Europe, but now they're like up there and taking medals. So uh, mm-hmm. I think by f- being funded or having like more serious sports schools, I think we will be like. Yeah, better. Yeah, so Swedish government, I know you're watching this podcast <laughs> for sure. So uh, go ahead and start. If you're hearing now. this, the Swedish government, please fund us wrestlers so we can achieve Sweden. our dreams. It's coming from the Nordic wrestling champion. Come on, Swedish government. True. I'm not going to do the graduation, but at least, no, okay. <laughs> we, we, we tag them in this video. Like, yeah. But aren't there like sponsors? You can get like smaller sponsors with like, small amount of money or they are sponsor you with like drinks like Noco or clean but <laughs> you cannot really get a big sponsor who funds you like the whole your career <laughs> that's sad maybe in the future we'll see if the swedish government sees hopefully the hopefully in turkey yeah, yeah. there's this like traditional wrestling where uh, people like put oil on, on, on themselves <laughs> harder for the opponent to get a hold uh, did you ever like try any different type of wrestling that's, I mean, that's, that's a completely different <laughs> thing. Have you ever tried getting rubbed on in it's oil? It's called, wrestling. it's called oil wrestling. I think Wait. it's called Yalugiresh. Is that true? Is that, oh, you speak Turkish now? <laughs> They're allowed to put their hands into their opponent's shorts to get a better hold. So, mm. it just well, you look said good. it. Unfortunately, that's true. Uh, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't look that good. I've seen pictures of uh, mm-hmm. oil wrestling. And uh, to be honest, uh, I don't want to do it at all. <laughs> I think it's enough that we have like funny looking singlets already. Like our, what we wear in wrestling, in proper wrestling. Right. Yeah. The Borat thing. <laughs> the, the Borat thing. <laughs> it's called singlets. It sounds much better okay. to say singlets. Sorry, I'll say singlets from now on. <laughs> but it, it's not the first time I hear someone call it uh, a bore, the Borat thing. That's so much better. <laughs> there is a reason why we have these singlets, and it's because uh, it, you want the, like, the shorts or the pants to be at like, this, the same part as the shirt, because if you have a shirt and shorts, you can like get stuck with your fingers in the shorts or something. So, <laughs> like if we <a> practice... <laughs> It's for practical reasons that we have singlets. But if they find a solution, they're welcome to use it. Because they looked so fabulous. They <laughs> so fashionable. Well, at least they're not like in the in the seventies when like they they were like this and you saw like almost the whole body. Nowadays mm-hmm. they're almost like uh, a tank top. I'll definitely find a picture of that, uh, like the wrestling wear in 80s and then put a picture of that in the podcast and also Yalu Guresh, uh, oil wrestling no Yalu Guresh. no leave that fucking no, that's not, that has nothing to do with me Yalu Guresh, oil wrestling <laughs> okay well, you can watch it in your own time <laughs> <laughs> now you guys if you want to watch oil wrestling you can do that in your spare time 
but now we're talking proper wrestling. Mm -hmm. wrestling. Now you guys make it sound like it's fucking <laughs> porn or something. Right? It's, a, it's a legitimate way of wrestling. I have a question. You got 2K on Instagram. You say people yeah. can recognize you from your ears sometimes. Do you ever get like people sliding in your DM? Like, oh my God, you're my idol. <laughs> it is attractive. Well, I mean, one, one thing that happens pretty often to me is that like wrestlers from like other countries in the world can like not like slides in in, in the dms like try to try to like flirt with me but i mean so i can get some like for example yesterday i had a wrestler from tajikistan i have no clue who he is and everything he has texted me like hi i saw you at the world championships you did very well so it's fun like that you can get that's a text so nice. yeah that's i sweet. know that's that's what one thing that like keeps you moving on and keep training but sliding into the dms mm, i don't know it depends on if someone is interested in guys like wearing borat dresses <laughs> if they're interested in that then they will slide in uh, so right now like the, the face of mma uh, or like martial arts basically like conor mcgregor like he's the the most popular guy yeah, yeah. In, in the in the fighting world and uh, he's known for his like trash talking. Does that ever happen? Like when you when you wrestle, like when you go to these like international competitions. Or this trash talking that's like pretty much a thing that's that's in MMA. Yeah, in wrestling, okay. we don't have that at all. And uh, these guys who trash talk as well in MMA, I know they they are respectful to each other. It's just like in front of media. Of course, we might look aggressive. We have like these scary ears, broke <laughs> nose, and so on, but. Scary costumes. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, mm -hmm. no, I forgot what we were talking. Oh, yeah. about. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I did. Interrupted me. <laughs> we were talking about trash talking. Trash talking. It happens like on senior level, the most not not in cadet, which is like between. I am currently junior, and I was cadet last year. So both the, those categories is between 15 and 20 years old. And uh, between that category, there's not so much trash talking. How many points do you get in, like, in the handball? It's like 50 or like 40 and the, that kind of numbers. But what kind of numbers is it in wrestling? You can, you can win. So you can win in a few ways in wrestling. You can win, uh, you can win by points. Then it's like after six minutes of wrestling, the match over and the one with the most points wins. Or you can win on the technical superiority, which is if you win with 10 points difference. So for example, 10-0 or 12-2 and so on. Or you can win by fall. That's like by pinning him. You, like you're having on, on his shoulder for like, I think it's like three or five seconds. Then the match is immediately, immediately over. That's that make you less confused <laughs> it's great i get it a little bit more now okay. i will probably not be able to like retell this to someone but <laughs> then they got this video you kind so. of get it yourself yeah. that's most important <laughs> now i can be um uh, wrestling <laughs> god now let's get let's get into the let's get onto the mat with me and we will have a match <laughs> <laughs> now when you know the rules He'll be the fourth place in the World uh, Cadet Championship. You came in fifth, you, no, but there's no fourth place. You said that. He's going to be... Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. I'm going to be that place, because it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, One good thing about not made by taking fourth or fifth place is that you don't have to get up on the podium. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh <my laughs> Benefits goodness. in everything! <laughs> that joke definitely makes sense. Like, this is high. This is, like, <laughs> it's not that easy to... Get oh damn it. boy, it's hot. I mean, <laughs> climbing up there, it takes, it takes energy. <laughs> yeah, After definitely. you're done body slamming someone on their spine three times, but, yep, that's just... <laughs> so so this letter. is, all right, so not, now I know why you, why you do this. Wait, where's that video? All right, so this is why you're training like this, to, just to get onto the podium when you, <laughs> when you play. <laughs> so th this is well, podium, podium you training. Could see that, you could see it that way. Mm -hmm. Or it could be because because I want to 
become more expl explosive. But <laughs> we go with the podium. That sounds yes. better. <laughs> I feel like you're going to become famous one day. And this, this podcast is, is going to be, I don't know if they use this or not, but I feel like I might see myself on TV in the future. Lad's already <laughs> pretty famous, like best in Scandinavia 2000K on Instagram. <laughs> He's fine. So I want to uh, finish the podcast by asking, like, how does the uh, corona affect, because our name is Generation Corona, like our podcast name is Generation Corona. I want to ask, like, how yeah. does corona affect your training? Uh, so how, how, how does it look right now, like? Uh, how bad? Wait, I I cannot even ask the question fucking properly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <gonna ask> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just, just, just re-asking the same question again and again. Okay, so uh, as you know, like our name is Generation Corona Podcast. So I just want to end the podcast by asking you, how did Corona affect your training? Well, I mean, I still do train, uh, mm -hmm. so that's good. I can keep on training, but we're not the same amount of people in practice now it's like me well my dad which is my coach and uh, mm -hmm. like two more guys only especially in wrestling since it's like it's a uh, full uh, body contact all the time uh, you really so need much. to be careful it's not so much social distancing in like wrestling yeah yeah <laughs> the two exactly. meter rule <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming on the show, Kevin. We want to see you in uh, bigger stages in the future. I want to thank you as well. It's, a, it's been a pleasure to be invited for this. I really enjoy speaking with you guys, getting to know you better and telling about myself. Yeah. And uh, I hope you get uh, even better episodes coming up than this one. <laughs> we wish you all the best in life and with your career. Yes. I assume you're all born in 2001 so i hope you get a good student even though even though the circumstances aren't the best for having the student right now take care All right yeah see you. bye bye kevin that was so good that was great he's so nice back to the channel okay <laughs> where everybody's so sad just, okay well i'm not sad I'm just quiet i'm tired <laughs> I was it's, out all day. That's really nice. It's a dinner. What's nice? Yeah, me neither, man. I'm sorry. It's this nice, Kuzey. Yeah, it is, nice, yeah, is, it is that. Uh, do you use that to like design dresses or no? You just put on the dress. Put the I dress. just put the clothes wear when I want to wear them. So but it's actually interesting. Everyone thinks it costs like a lot. They're like, oh, was it 500 crowns as a designer? I got it for 50 crowns back in the like countryside. 50 crowns. Yeah. Sounds good. It was at a it was at an antique place, and I was like, "I'll fucking take that." It, you, that's what how you said, right? You just yeah. went into the store like, "I'll, I'll fucking take get it." That. Yeah. You wrap hey, it. That's mine, mate. That's <laughs> mine. <laughs> that's <laughs> mine. Good impression. You throw the money, and the lady's like, "We don't take pounds here. Are you fucking crazy?" <laughs> like, <laughs> we don't do monopoly money here. But so, guys, man. we hope you enjoyed this podcast today. And please subscribe, like, comment, do what you do best, because that's what you do best. Take care, guys. What? No, it's, it's fine. Also, of course, as usual, you can find our social media and the guests' social media in the description below. So if you're interested in seeing Kevin's journey when he eventually becomes a megastar, uh, follow him in the be one cool. of his first 5,000 followers. Precisely. That's pretty cool. Exactly. Like, imagine if you have followed Slata when they only had 5,000 followers. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe, uh, leave a like, and uh, as always, stay home, stay safe. Peace. Peace. Do what Hey guys, I'm your new host.